So if you guys can believe it or not, the Nintendo Switch is well over two years old at this point. I still wake up every morning thinking back to myself, my younger, more pessimistic Neo. Well, I'm still pessimistic and cynical, but when it came to the Nintendo Switch, this system that I honestly thought would just be another Nintendo handheld is going to be going down as probably my favorite Nintendo system, if you can believe it or not. I mean, not only do I play this thing damn near every single day, but just look at the amount of games that I've amassed in just a year and a half. And I guarantee you, I probably have only completed about 30% of these, which I got to say 30% for me is a pretty big deal. But while I love the Nintendo Switch, I love its ever-growing library of games and its diversity. One of the things about the Nintendo Switch that I love more than anything is how it's breaking down our preconceived notions of what it means to be a Nintendo system. Now, we've all had this discussion before. We've been having this discussion for the, for the past 20 years. Nintendo's history with third parties. It's always been rocky. No matter what anybody's going to try to tell you that Nintendo has had third party here, they've had third party there, they'll cherry pick the exclusives that ended up going multi-platforms and became bigger hits on other systems. Let's just call a spade a spade. Nintendo has had nowhere near the amount of quality third-party support as they should have. The past 15 years of gaming, 98% of the major games that everybody is talking about, some of the biggest multi-platform titles, ended up skipping the Nintendo systems. And for some of the games that were deemed worthy of being on a Nintendo system, more often than not, they were games people didn't really care about to that extent, so they would consider it quality third-party, Or they ended up being gimped versions that flopped because why would somebody out there spend the same amount of money for a gimped experience that doesn't have all the same features and doesn't run as well? What we've seen with the Nintendo Switch, though, is we've seen all those relations start to mend. We've seen better third-party support. We've seen more complete experiences from third parties show up on the Switch. And it started very small and gradual. It started with last generation ports such as the elder scrolls 5 skyrim that was an old game it launched for full price on nintendo switch and then we saw some other games such as doom doom wasn't as old as skyrim it actually launched earlier in the generation for playstation and xbox but it came to switch it was full price and then we saw the same thing with wolfenstein 2 there seems to be a trend here all these games are coming from bethesda that launched on switch about a good six to eight months after the other systems now even though all those games were full price those games were the complete experiences they had the content those were the same games that you would play sure they didn't run the best they didn't look the best and yeah you could probably get them cheaper on other systems but they were the complete experiences and you want to know something the nintendo fans ate them up like crazy which is why we're getting more third-party games from bethesda which has prompted a lot of other developers to come out and release their games on Switch. And amongst all these great third-party games we're seeing on here, while it's awesome to see them, one trend keeps continuing more than anything. And that is the cartridge conundrum. I don't need to sit here and explain to you guys one of the biggest fears that comes from being a Switch owner and collecting physical games. Will this game actually be on the cartridge when I buy it? Why in the world am I going out to the store and buying this game if I have to download more than half of it? That has been one of the biggest problems for Switch owners. And it makes a lot of sense. Because why are you going out there and paying for a physical version of a game when you have to come home and download it anyway? And God forbid something were to ever happen in the next 10 to 20 years and those servers are no longer up. You can't play those games. At least with PlayStation and Xbox, for the most part, the games are on the disc right out the gate. For the most part. I mean, there are a couple of things that they have, like the day one patches that in some situations you need them for the game to function. But more often than not, you can play those games and you can experience them. Nintendo Switch owners really can't say the same. And we've always wondered why these developers come out here and they just put 2% of a game on a cartridge and force you to download the rest. What even is the point? Well, it comes down to cost. Nintendo Switch cartridges are not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, especially compared to Blu-rays. The amount that it takes to manufacture a single Blu-ray, by comparison to a Nintendo Switch cartridge, it's a pretty big difference. You know, Nintendo Switch cartridges are proprietary format versus Blu-ray, which is used 
by not only PlayStation, not only Xbox, but it's used by every single other manufacturer. Millions upon millions of people use Blu-ray. Not that many people use Nintendo Switch cartridges. And when you look at the capacity of the cartridges, ranging from 1 gigabyte, 2 gigabyte, 4 gigabyte, 8 gigabyte, and I believe 16 gigabyte, it makes sense why some of these games would be download only, or at least half download. Because if you're trying to bring those experiences to the Switch, unless you have some crazy wizardry under your belt and you're a compression master, it's kind of a it's kind of a rocky situation, man. You're between a rock and a hard place. However, what we just saw last week at this year's E3 basically throws a wrench in the whole idea and notion that things are too expensive. Ladies and gentlemen, transitioning into the next scene in three, two, one. Boom. Straight from CD Projekt Red themselves. Besides base game, both expansions and all 16 DLCs on a single game card. Boxed version of Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition contains stickers, maps, the Witch Universe Compendium, hashtag Switcher, available for pre-order in selected stores. Now you don't need to worry about every single thing that comes with a physical edition. Even though that is pretty dope for a... At this point, it's going to be a four and a half year old port that's getting a, a nice day one edition. All of the DLC on a single game card, a single game card. The Witcher 3 is going to be the very first Nintendo Switch game, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, that will utilize a full 32 gigabyte card. 32 gigs. When this game on PlayStation and Xbox is what 50 gigs 60 gigs somewhere around there so that makes sense as far as the game being brought to switch of course they don't have to have the highest quality texture assets maybe the highest quality audio but to have all of that content the complete witcher 3 experience on switch on a single game card with no additional download that is commendable beyond belief now it remains to be seen whether or not what they're doing with this game is going to set a precedent it might going forward maybe the reason why they were able to do this was because the cartridge costs are cheaper now because there's so many switch cartridges out that they can afford to do that or maybe they have some type of partnership going on with nintendo maybe they're like you know what bring witcher 3 to the switch and you know for every such and such amount of units you sell we'll give you money for it or, or whatever they can do to lower the burden that would come for this because CD Projekt Red doesn't need the money. Guys, they're, they're putting out Cyberpunk 2077. They got Keanu Reeves money, right? Breathtaking money. But they're doing this. And they're making sure the experience is quality. Because this is what they aspire towards. This is the gold standard. And this is how it should be done. By comparison to people like Capcom. Who can't even put all the Mega Man games on a single cartridge. They can't even put old Resident Evil games on a single cartridge. You can't do that, but you're over here talking about, oh, why don't people buy our games? You're over here right now just, <laughs> I can't even, I just cannot fathom it. You're releasing overpriced Resident Evil games, and in addition to that, you're coming out here, and you're putting only one of the games on the cartridge. That just, it, it's asinine to me that a company like that would come and do that sort of thing. Like, like, really, like, when you have people like CD Projekt Red who are going and they're making sure that this is going to be a competent version, you have Capcom out here who would release <laughs> one cartridge with one Mega Man game that's maybe 100 megabytes and make it download the rest. I really hope this sets a precedent going forward. This is exactly what I want to see. Now, I understand that game development is expensive and the cartridges are not the most appealing and enticing format to put games on. But if this game sells, and I have it on good authority that it will, considering Switch owners buy games. Yes, they do. Look at those sales. Maybe this problem will stop. Maybe it will. But as it stands right now, I am so excited for The Witcher 3 to be on the Switch, man. Just think about that for a second. Think about that. The Witcher 3 and Zelda Breath of the Wild on the exact same system. That is just unfathomable, but I'm just so excited. And I'm so excited for you guys to play The Witcher 3. Seriously, it's one of my favorite games. If you love Breath of the Wild 
and you love just its world and exploration and all that stuff, I really think you're going to love The Witcher 3. Not that they're comparable in any way, but just like the level of attention to detail that you guys love of Breath of the Wild in terms of exploration, Witcher 3 does that for its story and its side quest. You guys are going to go insane on how cool it is. Seriously. So comment down below. Are you guys going to be picking up The Witcher 3 on the Switch? Because I know a lot of people are saying, I don't want to play it. It's 540, 540p, 720 dynamic and all that stuff. I'm getting that day one because not only do, am I a Witcher fanatic, but I want to support good things like this. And for people saying $60 is too much for The Witcher 3 in 2019, The Witcher 3. Okay. Anyways, for me to hear for now, my name is NGS signing out. Like always, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.